In this After Effects tutorial, we are going to take the lower third that we created and we're going to export it as a template so that we can send it to our editor who's working in Adobe Premiere and they can bring that in and make all the lower thirds they need and they don't even have to open up After Effects. In fact, they don't even have to have any motion graphic design experience whatsoever. We're going to make it super simple for them going forward. Let's get to it. So you've already created your lower third and you've used the source rect at time to ensure that your boxes are constantly resizing. And now it's time to take this uh, lower third and turn it into a template that we can send to Adobe Premiere. Uh, this, the benefit of this is that you are not having to have the editor open up the After Effects project inside of Premiere and then have to constantly open up uh, After Effects every time they want to change the name and the title of the uh, person that is being interviewed or uh, is appearing on screen. So this motion graphic template is going to be super, super, super important uh, to editors and to you because you can then take these and package these and offer them as part of your services. So first thing that I want to do is I'm going to go in here and I just want to clean up this uh, project. It's always a good idea to try to keep your projects as clean as possible. So these matte boxes that I've created, I'm just going to go ahead and click on the shy button for each one of these. And then when I click on the um, hide all layers or the shy master switch, all we end up with are the four layers that are essential for this project. Interesting thing about the color choice that I used for this lower template, it's actually based on the Joy-Con controllers that my son has for his Nintendo Switch. How did I pull those colors and make them almost exact? Well, there's another little Adobe application that you might want to check out and use in the future. The application is called Adobe Capture, and it's available on the Apple iTunes App Store or on Google Play, and it's very simple to use. You simply point it at something in real life, in this case, the Joy-Cons of my son's Switch, and then it will sample the colors that it sees most uh, prevalently in the image, and it will create a color swatch for you that you can then save and export and upload to your Creative Cloud account that you have with Adobe. And then, because all of your Adobe products are linked together, you can open that up inside of After Effects and access the theme from your library. It's very, very handy. Now that you've saved your, your color swatch, we can go in and go to Window, Extensions, Adobe Color Themes, and we can get this Color Themes uh, dock to open up, and we can even dock it to our comp window by just dragging it over and setting it off to the side. We'll go ahead and shrink it down a little bit, and then we can go into My Themes, and go to my library, and sure enough, there's my Joy-Con theme that I can reference and grab colors from anytime going forward. So that's a really, really cool and useful tool. Okay, if you're satisfied with your lower third, it's always a good idea to save the project. So go ahead and save your project. We can go up to File and Save. You can go Increment and Save, which I think is really valuable to use because the Increment and Save will append a number onto the end of the project so that if you make a mistake at some point, you can always go back to your last save point and restart from there. So this one is, is very useful uh, to, to use. Okay, now let's create our motion graphic template. I'm gonna go up to Window, and I'm gonna go down to Essential Graphics, and that will open up our Essential Graphics window. And right now it's empty, but uh, there are so many things that we can add into this uh, template that we're going to create and send over to a Premiere. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to select our composition. And of course, the only composition that we have in here right now is our lower third. So I'm just going to go ahead and select lower third. And what we can do is we probably should set a poster frame so that the person using this knows what this, um, this template looks like. So I'm just going to go ahead and set, lower, uh, set a poster frame. And you can see it gives us a little thumbnail right here. But now we need to add elements into this essential graphics window so that we can export it into our motion graphic template. So how do we know what properties from these layers we can use? Well, 
it's pretty easy because we can solo supported properties and down here in our uh, timeline window, we can see all of the properties that we can bring into the essential graphics uh, that we can give control to our editor over on Adobe Premiere. So obviously one of the first things that we want to do is we want to be able to allow the editor to change the name of the person that they're that this lower third is for. So I just have to go in and grab the source text. I just drag it up here. And instead of saying source name, how about we call this one name? And just as a default, how about we just call this one first name, last name, and then we'll click away. Now that will change the text over here in your project, but that's fine. We, this is, again, this is just a template. We just want to give them an example of what this is going to look like. And so likewise, I think we're done with the name. We can go down here to the title and do the same thing. We can drag this up here and we can call this one their title or position or whatever that you wanted to. Um, title or position. We can put that in as well. And so that will change. And then maybe we want to give them the ability to control the colors. Maybe they don't want to use this purple and gold color or eggplant and, and mustard color every single time. So how about we give them the ability to change those colors as well? So I'm just going to go up here to my name box and I'm going to grab the color for the name box. And I'm just going to say name box color. And I'm going to just move this up so that's in between. And we can also do the same thing for the stroke if we like. So I'm just going to bring this one in and call it name box stroke, stroke color. And I'm just going to move that into a position. Again, you don't have to necessarily do this. In fact, you might want to leave it first name, last name, so that when they're over in Premiere, they have easy access to everything quickly. But I like to group things together, and so that's the reason why I'm, I'm doing it this way. So I think we're done with the name box. Now let's do the same thing with, and we're done with the title. Let's do the same thing with the color of the title color box. Title box color. And we'll do the same thing with the stroke, not the stroke width, but the stroke color. Although if you wanted to allow them to change the uh, width of the stroke or any of those things, you could add those in there as well. Same thing with the color of the name. You could add all of that stuff in there if you want. But for right now, I'm just going to assume that we're always going to want our text to be white against that darker color. Uh, these are easy to change later on if we need to, and it's easy to add additional controls in here if we need to. But for the purposes of this tutorial, I think this is enough to get us started. So now I'm going to uh, give this a name. So let's call this one lower third class example. And I'm going to go ahead and click on export motion graphic template. Now this will ask us several questions. This project needs to be saved. Do you want to save it? Sure. Let's save it. It's going to save it. And then it's going to bring up the export the template options. And we want to save this on a local template folder. Although if you are working in groups or you're working with Adobe cloud, you could save this into your my library folder, just like we did with the color swatches just a moment ago. But I'm going to go ahead and save this in my local templates folder. And it's important that we save this in our templates folder so that Premiere can find this when it's time to edit. Uh, we should probably also turn on the options for warn me if this motion graphic template uses fonts that are not available from Adobe fonts and warn me if the After Effects needs to be installed in order to customize this motion graphics template. And then also this other um, warning as well. I'm just going to put in here uh, class example lower third you can put in whatever keywords you want if it's the name of your show you know whatever that you want to put in there you could put those keywords in there i'm going to go ahead and hit okay and it's going to tell us all right hey look you just told me to turn you to let you know if there are fonts that are not available 
uh, from Adobe Fonts, and it's telling me, yes, the Bebas font or Bebas font is not available. That's fine. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And it saved our uh, graphics template. Now let's switch over to Premiere and see how we can use this. Okay, here we are in Adobe Premiere and we've edited our project. It's time to add in our graphics and this person needs a lower third. So let's go over to the graphics tab up here at the top and that will open up the essential graphics panel. And from this, we can look in our local templates file folder or we can look at the entire folder, or we can search for keywords, or we can scroll through. And because this was uh, alphabetical, oh, there it is right there. I think we just passed it. I've got a couple of examples on here. So I'm just gonna grab this and drag it right here into my timeline where I want it. It's gonna take a moment for it to lock up and sync with everything else that we're doing. But when we hover over this, you can see that we have our first name and last name and title or position right here where we want it. Now, how do we control this? Well, it's fairly easy. Uh, I'm going to double click on this item and it's going to open up in our uh, preview window. I'm just going to go over here to effects controls and you will see that we have an option for graphics parameters. So if I drop down the name, I can put in first name, last name. I can put in the title. And now that we have changed our colors and changed our names and everything is good, well, ported, uh, this there it goes. Looks good. A built-in microphone, the wireless lavalier attached to the person's shirt, as well as a shotgun mic. And it goes out. We're running into some buffering issues, but, you know, it plays back fine. Uh, the nice thing about this is I can continue to go over to my Essential Graphics library. I can go over here to Browse. And I can bring another instance of this in later on. And again, it's set up for first name, last name. I can either go over here into my effects control panels, or I could go over here to the essential graphics panel and go to edit. And I could change everything right here as, as well. Let's uh, call this one uh, Jim Smith and Angry Editor. Okay. And that has no effect on this first lower third. That's how, that's how great creating these motion graphic templates are in creating an easy workflow for someone who is editing a lot of graphics. Now, this doesn't have to just be lower thirds. This could be title graphics, especially if it's a, a graphics system or a graphics package that you're using again and again, like uh, sports game of the week, um, you know, various players, those kinds of things. Easy to just drop those in, make those changes and keep editing with ease. That wraps it up for this tutorial. I hope you found it useful and informative. If you do have any questions, just let me know.